Breaking news tonight on Evenings LL8. Johnson & Johnson and its impact on your fourth stimulus. I explain how the FDA's decision about Johnson & Johnson could impact your fourth stimulus check. It certainly impacted the reopening play across the board today. As travel and leisure stocks fell and certain FANG stocks rose, what does this mean for you? $1,400 stimulus checks are needed, Jerome Powell said over the weekend. This is a monthly stimulus check that the Democratic leadership, both the senators and the House members, want to give you. In this record recording, I will go over how today's events may have impacted your monthly stimulus check. That's the fourth, that's the fourth stimulus check of either $1,400 or $2,000. And I'll go over why the Johnson & Johnson details today could impact this as well. Meantime, the CPI was released today and it showed more growth and exactly what we expected. Does that help or does that hurt for stimulus across the board? Meantime, this falls on the series of conflicting economic news that's both good and bad. But ultimately, the push is underway for forced stimulus to pay you a big payday. July to December monthly stimulus checks. $1,400 to $2,000 a month, the single biggest payday you will ever see. Also happening tomorrow, Coinbase about to have its IPO. Is this the cusp of a bubble or is this the most underrated IPO of the year? New video from the White House talking about forced stimulus and its impact and whether it needs to be done by recon or not. And meantime, what I've been reporting all week long is that by the end of this week, you could see a $50,000 student loan debt forgiveness and a $10,000 EIDL grant check in your deposit account. Boy, there's a lot of exciting news as we go into an evening. And let's get to it on Evenings LA starting right now. Thank you for joining me on a big night of evenings, L. Light. What an, an exciting night we have upon us. As fourth stimulus is heating up, third stimulus is heating up, even fifth stimulus. Yes, I have those details as well. And also, student loan debt forgiveness, and away we go with EIDL grant as well. How are you? It's a big night of evenings, L. Light. Having a good evening? I hope you are. I hope your Tuesday has been wonderful. Coming up after this broadcast is a doubleheader at 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time with Javita Light back in the mix. She says hello. She Maybe you can't hear her because the scarf's in front of her mouth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but get your scarf ready because the scarf lady herself is back. Javita late tonight at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 7 o'clock West Coast, and at 9 o'clock Central Time. If you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Also, like this video. And if you have not become a member, consider becoming a member of Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Calcino VIP. And I might be in the live chat. So say hi. Hi, how are you? Boy, what a day it was. We started with that shocker about Johnson Johnson. We continued with the surprise about Coinbase. And then we had that CPI, which, you know, we were coming on Tuesday. I told you that was coming. In fact, just a few days ago, I told you about how forced stimulus is impacted by today's CPI number. Well, it came in exactly as expected. Let's get right to that CPI to start with. For stimulus, which is a monthly stimulus check under the forced stimulus package, which the congressional leaders want to give you, is impacted by good news and it's impacted by bad news. Bad economic news supports stimulus. Good economic news makes people hesitant about giving stimulus. Ultimately, as you sit here now in April, you are good for purposes of getting monthly stimulus checks. It's going to happen? Sure, it is. Uh, what would derail it? What would derail it is the economy rebounding with too many jobs and too much economic uh, too much economic growth before they get it to a vote. Is that happening today? No. This month? No. Next month? No. So what's the concern? That they take too long getting this bill to a vote and they don't get it to a vote before July. Well, when is the vote? 
Leader Schumer and Speaker Pelosi says the vote is no later than July. So are we good? We are good if they stay to that tape, but you know what they've done before. Uh, it's imminent. It's around the corner. It's $12 ice cream. Well, no, it's $12.95 ice cream. Uh, so you, you've, you've heard what they said before. You want this bill to a vote as soon as possible. What's important to understand is that these are legislators. They legislate. They determine the laws of this country, not the President of the United States. He gives recommendations and they make modifications. Well, their modification is a monthly stimulus check. It's not coming from the President. It's coming from them. It's coming from House members who are Democrats. It's coming from Senate members who are Democrats. They have the push, they have the means, and they have the procedure to give you that monthly stimulus check. How much are we talking about? How much money is this? Now that I hear July coming from your mouth, <laughs> and $12 ice cream, uh, when, when is the moolah coming? And how much money is this? Is this another one of those $600 cheapo checks? Is this like $300? No, this is the single biggest payday you have ever seen for this channel. Look at these numbers. Just look. <laughs> Look at me. I see each, we see each other, as Candy Burris would say on Orange uh, Atlanta Housewives. We see each other. The stimulus sees you, and you see the stimulus. Look at that. If they got this done in July, it's a monthly check through December. It's six checks. It's six checks. This is per person. This is just for you. This is not you and uh, and Sirloin. This is not you and Blaine Six Six. This is just you, you yourself, and you. <laughs> Two thousand dollars a month for an individual. Fourteen hundred dollars a month for an individual. What is going on? This just looks delicious. It is delicious. Um, let me go over the economics of the plans and the proposals and the counter proposals. Senators versus House members. House members want to do this every month for the pandemic plus one year. The senators want to do it to December. Which one will override the other? Well, ultimately, the House has the final say. You know, it starts at the House, goes to Senate, Senate makes modifications, goes back to the House, but the House won't be really able to, to change what the Senators put on path. Now, clearly, the House is a longer time frame. So if the House members got it in there before the Senate got it to it, would the Senators shorten it? No, I don't think they would. The House members are generally younger progressives, uh, junior members of Congress. The senators are generally very senior, well-regarded centralist Democrats. And then here are the amounts. The House members want to give you $2,000 a month or for the first month and $1,000 every month thereafter. The senators don't give you the number. But word on the street is the senators want to do $1,400 a month or $2,000 a month, which would pay you this. Who gets this? You do. Me? Yes, you. <laughs> you mean me? Yeah, I mean you. <laughs> It's just, uh, this is really what's at play. Now, it's impacted by good economic news and bad economic news. Bad economic news supports stimulus. Good economic news works work against stimulus. Well, we started exactly the way we thought today would start. The CPI, I told you, was coming in today. I told you it was going to be good. I told you it was going to work against stimulus, and it did come in good. It didn't come in incredibly high. It just came in good. It came in at 2.5%. This is the consumer price index number, which gauges, determines growth of the economy. It showed its highest growth. It showed a 2.5% growth since March of 2020, last year. This is the highest year-to-date growth since August of 2018. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, this is a lot of growth. This is a lot of growth. The highest year-to-date growth since 2018. If this sounds familiar, it should, because last Friday we had the sister or brother to that number released, and it was the producer price index. And its number was really almost apples for apples. It showed the highest producer price index growth year to date in nearly nine and a half years. Okay, so I'm getting the message from you, Ally Light. I got it. We don't want this economy rebounded. We don't want the jobs restounded. I understand those monthly stimulus checks, but isn't there bad economic news out there? There is. Friday, 22% of February 
businesses closed in the country, small, medium-sized businesses, um, 22% that have survived this pandemic shut their doors permanently. That was small, medium-sized businesses. That's bad news. There was also bad news the day before as continuing unemployment claims continue to stay super high, 3.73 million. And states like New York and California saw a resurgence. And here's what's very interesting is California is showing the lowest number of vac of COVID cases in the country. We're reopening faster than any other state is reopening. And look how many unemployment claims there is. So this is very confusing economic news. It shows that we're reopening, but yet look at the data. And then the new unemployment claims just very, very high. Takeaway, too hard to predict this economy. It's too hard to predict this economy. You would think that a state like California, where everything is reopening because COVID cases are so low, we are going to go to full reopening in June, and we may even make it there before June. We're, we're Zooming. COVID cases are very low here. Vaccination rates are very high. You would assume that people are back to work and they got a job. No. California had the worst growth of unemployment new claims last week in the country. These are people who are newly on unemployment. These are not people who are just continuing unemployment from during the pandemic. It shows that the economy is too hard to predict. And then, that was how we started the day. <laughs> and then came Johnson & Johnson. Yeah, so Johnson & Johnson uh, is a one of three vaccines in distribution in the United States. Moderna and Pfizer were the first two. Johnson & Johnson joined the mix later on. They are the single dose vaccine. The number of doses administered in this country currently is in the millions per day. Johnson & Johnson has literally done less than 7 million total in the United States. And of those 7 million doses, six came back with concerns about blood clots, one in a very serious circumstance. Six people out of 7 million, causing the FDA to halt use of, of Johnson & Johnson's COVID vaccine this morning. That caused a lot of confusion and a lot of discussion. At issue is really how it impacts your stimulus. What I have seen over the last few weeks with you is the president really touting Johnson & Johnson a lot as what he's called the workhorse vaccine, because it's a single dose, that it would ramp up vaccine numbers across the country. It would accelerate our vaccination numbers. It would set us up faster to reopen, faster to get back to normal. Does this derail us? It does take us off of track for a while. How long will this be? It won't be a long time. It'll be short term. It is not a permanent halt. It is a temporary halt. But the impact was immediately seen on Wall Street. Johnson Johnson's impact on travel-related stocks seen instantly upon the opening of the markets this morning. Carnival, the cruise carrier, down 2% at opening today. Norwegian cruises down at 2% at opening today. Also for travel, Johnson & Johnson caused Marriott to slide 1% at opening today. It also caused Hilton to slide at 1% today. It's ironic because just two days ago, I have been talking about Johnson & Johnson numbers in a different context. More about that in a second. And as the reopening plays slid, the FANG stocks rose. FANG refers to Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Apple was up 2% at opening today. Facebook, FP, FB, was up at 0.3%. And Amazon, AMZN, was up at 1% at opening today. It was interesting because just two days ago, I had told you this graphic that Johnson & Johnson, because the Baltimore factory that had big problems, was not going to be able to deliver many doses this week and only 700,000 doses compared to 4.9 the week before. So we had problem with Johnson & Johnson coming into this week before we even had this news. And I already told you that New York, California, and Florida were going to see a 90% drop in Johnson & Johnson doses available. This is a graphic from two days ago uh, on this channel. So what does this mean for you and your stimulus? What does this mean for you and the economy? Well, no one really quite knows just yet. 
Currently, the, the notion, or at least the reaction, the gut reaction to start the day was, get at, is that the reopening play, businesses that are going to reopen as the economy gets back to normal, is going to be put on pause because of the Johnson Johnson fallout and that you need to come, go back into high tech. Many insiders think that that's a, a short-sighted guide, guidance and a short-sighted move because ultimately the Johnson Johnson situation is short-term. It's not going to be long. There's going to be FDA uh, updates within the next few days. And that no one thinks that Johnson Johnson will permanently be relieved uh, from distribution. It's just a temporary situation. And then we will continue along the lines. Now, what's also important to understand is that Johnson Johnson amounts for a very, very small fraction of the number of vaccine doses administered in this country daily. It's dominated, rather, by Moderna and it's dominated by Pfizer. Moderna and Pfizer, the first two to the, to the rodeo, they dominate the number of vaccines and distribution. So when you're considering stimulus, when you're considering economic rebounding, when you're trying to determine whether we're rebounded economically or not, you gotta really look at what's going on with the doses from Pfizer and Moderna. The Johnson & Johnson was just sort of an extra add-on in the last few weeks and did not amount to many of the doses being administered daily. So a flight out of travel and hospitality, it, uh, short-sighted, yes. Meantime, what may impact your stimulus in a very peculiar way, <laughs> get ready for a laugh about this one. This one is only something you would hear from me. <laughs> your stimulus could be impacted by tomorrow's events of an IPO for a company called Coinbase. Coinbase is set to have its initial public offering go public as a newly traded stock tomorrow. And insiders, our analysts, are now believing that the IPO price is so undervalued that it could double on its IPO date, that markets have not been able to estimate the value of the cryptocurrency play for tomorrow. There's that on the one side. Then on the other side is the incredible report from, a, well, it's not a report, it's a survey from Bank America that 74% of people who responded to Bank America survey did not say as to Coinbase that it was a bubble, but as to the whole cryptocurrency industry that it's a bubble. Hmm. Interesting. How does this impact your stimulus? First, if you see Coinbase go through the roof tomorrow and you see incredible uh, support, incredible excitement, incredible push, nothing that you've seen perhaps since Beyond Meat's IPO pre-pandemic. Remember Beyond Meat? That's that business that you go to the supermarket and it tastes like hamburger, but it's just not. It's like $12 ice cream, but, with, uh, but it's not $12. <laughs> Two dollar ice cream. Is it twelve dollars or two dollars? I keep on forgetting how much how much your ice cream is. Uh, it's like it's like Javina with scars, but you realize it's not a scarf; it's just a napkin. Uh, yeah, it. We have not seen a lot of excitement like something like this since then. And if you see that excitement tomorrow, this may not help stimulus. That if we see incredible robust happiness about Coinbase tomorrow, this may not particularly help stimulus. On the other hand. If you see more questions of whether crypto is on the cusp of potentially a bubble bursting, ooh, imagine a bubble bursting and saying, I need my stimulus. Yeah, can you give me a stimulus check? My crypto position just imploded. <laughs> yeah, if it sounds ironic, it it is not. <laughs> it is something totally likely to do. What's important to understand is that as we sit here right now, people are wondering, what about time frames? Let's look at these time frames. Uh, you know, we're here in April, and that third stimulus check is landing tomorrow for my veterans. Congratulations. Tomorrow's April 14th, so watch for that direct deposit tomorrow. But also happening this month is the remainder of third stimulus, and continuing into, into May is more of the third stimulus. But you see how June is going to be thin if you're looking for federal assistance until we get to July, you want this four stimulus to be into law by June so you start getting stimulus checks in July. Look at those dates. Here's what you need to know. As you're here in April and you may have just cashed that $1,400 stimulus check 
And by the, uh, th the question is, where's that next check? Here's what you need to know. First of all, by the way, my mail check recipients, I had a lot of people in the comments yesterday on Monday say, I just got the mail check today on Monday. Thank you, Ally. For some people, for some reason, a lot of people get mail checks of stimulus on Mondays. I don't know why. Maybe they send them out on the weekends. They just don't tell us. Uh, but yeah, those, those mail checks are still coming. Um, veterans are getting your 14 hour third stimulus check tomorrow. And there will be more mail checks tomorrow as well. Here's what you need to know. If you need assistance for rent, utilities, food, internet, get it now. Because it's going to be lean in a couple of weeks. And as I've been telling you for a while, this money is not going to replenish itself in the fourth stimulus. Eviction moratoriums are going to get lifted in September. They're not going to come back, I don't think. Um, I think this is the last rodeo for that. And so if you need rent and assistance, get it now. Uh, reach out to the volunteers if you cannot find it. Remember, it's at your state, your county, and your city. Then there's also assistance for mortgage assistance, property owner assistance, like property owner utility bills, and more. Reach out to the community page. The community page is in the description of this video. It's uh, right in the description. It says news.la.com forward slash community. But the volunteers can also help you if you can't find it. Next then in July, of course, is the start of the children's check of $3,600. In May, if you if you have already filed your 2020 tax return, you're going to get that refund check from IRS for unemployment benefits you may have paid taxes on. But until then, it's going to be a relatively lean time. Coming up later in this video, I have the exciting details about that EIDL grant coming. I have more exciting details about student loan forgiveness. I have more details about Javita tonight. <laughs> and I have more about what's going on with fourth stimulus monthly stimulus checks. Stay with me. I'll be back right at this commercial break. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. And the excitement continues right now on Evenings LA Late. I'm so excited for you for joining me on a big night across the board. Coming up next is Javita Late at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. We're going to have a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. That's a double header. Join me on the first video, and I'll send you to the second one as soon as the first one's done. You watch the first one, and then it teleports you to the next video automatically. It's a one-hour broadcast, two shows. You know, if you were on Google in the last month, one of the number one searches, according to a news, new article today, is when is the housing market going to burst? What? Yeah, a new series of reports suggests that a lot of people fear that a lot of items in this economy are about to burst. You just heard me talk about early in this recording that what was that enormous number of Bank of America customers believe that cryptocurrency is about to burst. But there's also a new report out today that says a vast majority of the American population was Googling when is the housing market going to burst. A new report says that the number that the search when is the housing market going to crash was searched two 
2,500% more in Google last month than any time before. And it now is, remains one of the most searched expressions on Google. There is a deep concern because of an accurate, acute shortage of houses on the market and the high escalation of prices that the market may crash. Now, if you've been with me for a while since last year, I used to talk about Marco Rubio a lot for <laughs> good and for bad. And one of the things I used to talk about Marco saying, because he is from covers South Florida as, 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 you know, as, as part of his priorities, is he said you can never let the housing market crash because that could cause the entire economy to implode. So does the, all those search terms by Americans cause them to believe that the economy is on the cusp of imploding? What do you think? Drop in the comments right now. But with that, let me cut back to that impact on forced stimulus. If you have a lot of people searching 2,500% more, a search term of things going economically bad, then you would presume that they also want stimulus, that they think that the economy is not good. And does that work that way? Absolutely. Ultimately, when the econ when consumers believe that there's bad news on the horizon or don't feel the impact of good news, then that supports stimulus. It's important to understand that I believe that is going to be singularly the biggest push for stimulus. On Sunday night, on 60 Minutes, Jerome Powell said, yeah, some parts of the economy are rebounding, but until we have full economic rebound, we're not going to let up. This is important to understand because as you look at that PPI number and CPI number, you may say, but that's not me. I just don't see a lot of jobs available in my town. I don't see a lot of jobs being created. Um, of everyone I know is unemployed. So when you see certain numbers like this, you may say, well, that just, you know, that's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing instead this. I'm seeing businesses close. I see a lot of for rent signs in my neighborhood. Or you may see a lot of your neighbors are completely unemployed or newly going on unemployment. And ultimate consumer confidence is a big push for stimulus. You know, you saw over the weekend people like this, Tom Gimbel saying, we're booming the economy. But ultimately, here's what's important to understand, is if three or four or five analysts a day tell you that the economy is really booming, that is not the determining factor. The determining factor is whether is whether the congressional leaders who want to give you stimulus think that you aren't booming. If senators and House members don't think the economy is booming and doesn't think it's rebounded and don't think it's going to be rebounded for a while, then they'll give you stimulus. So that's why you need to keep the push underway, Purple Power. Yesterday on Instagram, boy, I posted an Instagram story. I rarely do this. But I did this after I went on Twitter for the every day I'm on all the platforms, you know, for a few hours per day. And I did not see a lot of pushing from the Purple Power. I have not seen a lot of pushing from the Purple Power, uh, the viewers' channel, for, for stimulus. It causes me concern. It causes me concern because, A, I think people think it's just going to be given to them automatically, or B, that they think they can get to the push later on when the bill is in the Senate and the Congress. Here's the problem. You can't. This bill, the push really almost at this point is to get the bill by reconciliation, more importantly than even getting the MSC, because the president is having these bipartisan meetings to consider doing it bipartisan. And remember, bipartisanship does not get you a month, monthly stimulus check. Republicans won't give you a stimulus check. The president doesn't have stimulus checks at, in, in, his, in, in his ideas. It's the congressional leaders who can put it in there if there's a reconciliation process being done. So that is why it's important for you to understand that in the next about seven to 14 days, it is critical to be pushing for this MSC. It is critical to be pushing for this reconciliation process because this is the window of opportunity. If ultimately the president caves in and says, no, I'll do it bipartisan, I'll take out climate, we'll just do a few bridges and we'll do it, we'll call it a day at $400 billion. That's all we need, we're, we're good. Boy, stimulus could go kaput at that point and have to find another home, like a standalone bill or something. It would not be part of this. It would have to go somewhere else. You don't want that to happen. So you need to push purple power. You absolutely need to push. The President of the United States yesterday had what he called bipartisan meetings. But if you look at this bipartisan meeting, there's 
no less than two people in the room, three people in the room. So I'm not quite sure who he's trying to meet with. Is it a faux meeting? Republicans claim these are faux meetings. These aren't really bipartisan meetings. For your purposes, you hope they are faux. You hope that he is getting ready to recon. Let's listen in. There might be lack of uh, help uh, and uh, support from the federal government if the local authorities believe it's needed. Are you concerned things so. could be on a razor's edge, sir? So everything's going to be all right. But all kidding aside, we're, uh, we're, I'm prepared to negotiate as to how the extent of the minor infrastructure project, as well as how we pay for it. But uh, I think we're going to get in a serious conversation about how to do that. I think everyone acknowledges we need significant increase in, in infrastructure. It's going to get down to what we call infrastructure. But others say that that's a faux negotiation. I say it is, too. The president said he's not going to negotiate for climate. The Republicans also say they're not negotiating for climate. They're not putting it in. And if he's not taking it out, there's no negotiation. Conference, the White House sorry, was asked that as question well as, as well during an exchange the on Monday. From all these of are these groups, phone negotiations. That, uh, Let's the listen work to that exchange as well. trying to pass the George Flight Act, and the commission would not be the most constructive way to deliver on our top priority. So we are working together collectively to do exactly that. There are steps that we uh, will continue to communicate with these groups about what is most effective. In negotiating here, given how things play is having this bipartisan meeting today. But what is your message to some congressional Republicans who have expressed skepticism about whether the White House is authentically interested in negotiating here, given how things played out with the COVID relief bill? Well, I would say that the president, you don't use the president of the United States' time multiple times over, including two infrastructure meetings, bipartisan infrastructure meetings he's already had, or the meeting today if he did not want to authentically hear from the members attending about their ideas, about how to move forward this package in a bipartisan manner. Well, he's authentically hearing their opinions, but in the same breath, he's also said the President of the United States that he has not taken out climate, and the Republicans have said they're not putting in climate. Meantime, also heating up later this week, I've been reporting, is that student loan debt forgiveness will be forgiven by the president by executive order. The deadline for the education secretary to prepare that memo is Friday. Let's listen in to the excitement that Elizabeth Warren and Chuck Schumer have, hoping that executive order is going to be signed. Folks who say, but I don't have student loan debt. Why should I care about this? And the answer is, you should care. Because for every young person who's not starting a business, for every young person who's not buying a home. That's holding back the economy, and that affects every single one of us. So and that's a very clear message, that if you have student loan debt, the forgiveness of student loan debt really helps you get to the finish line. Here's what you need to know, and here's the big recap as we go into a big evenings. First, student loan debt forgiveness, I'm reporting exclusively, will be announced by the president sometime later this week to be signed into executive order, $50,000 of student loan debt. Second, $10,000 EIDL grant invitations are landing in inboxes all this week long. They're not in order. They're not in chronological order. They are first on the low-income-based community, and then they're going to the non-low-income-based community. The shuttered venue new grant meantime is opening again at sba.gov. Go apply if that's you. It's not just for venues. The PPP grant has been extended and the restaurant grant's about to go live. Also, my veterans, congratulations. Your deposits for fourth, for third stimulus checks of $1,400 will be tomorrow. $1,400 $1, on 414 <laughs> Four, fourteen, fourteen hundred dollars, and I think it's like the fourth wave. Uh, so congratulations! Watch that, and those deposits could appear throughout the day. Meantime, those paper checks are still coming. Finally, the push for multiple stimulus checks under the fourth stimulus package, another four, is heating up, and you need to keep it heating up. You need to push Purple Power. Take this video and share it on social media. Hashtag MSC. Hashtag Purple Power. Get the tweeting going. Um, get the tweeting going. Also, call out the cabinet members and speak to their staffers about the importance of what we've been discussing in these videos. Join me next for a lot of fun and a lot of laughs at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, as Javita Late joins us back in the mix. In an, another anniversary throwback, Javita Late joins us for a two for a two-part, one-hour special. If you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Also, like this video. And if you've not become a member, consider becoming a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Calcino VIP. Let's see if we can do two, three, four thousand likes. You were doing really well yesterday on the, the take videos. The live ones were a hot mess. <laughs>
<laughs> 10,000 people viewing two likes. I mean, <laughs> Hit that like button on the way out if you didn't like it on the way in. And with that, stay informed, stay focused, stay smiling, stay positive. Remember to give a subscribe because it's our one-year anniversary this month. We're trying to get to 400,000 subscribers by the end of the month. April 25th, away we go. We're almost there. Stay informed, stay focused, keep on smiling, keep on laughing, and stay with Ally. Friends.